everyone, Snubby J here. I have been using a clone effect in my videos for over a decade now, and it's to the point that some people think I have an actual twin brother. <gasps> Case in point, I thought by creating this video it would be the easiest way to share my tips and tricks for achieving your own split screen effect. Heads up, I will be using Final Cut Pro 10. Most video editing softwares will have comparable features, but the free ones like iMovie will have varying degrees of limitations. You can use a green screen to achieve this effect, but I prefer and will be demonstrating an overlay masking technique, which I think looks more natural and is the easiest to achieve. So, let's begin. Once you have your brilliant idea, I have found a lot of the work is in the pre-production or planning stage. So first, set up your space. I like to have my clones as far apart as possible so that I have as much editing room. You really don't want them to overlap because otherwise you're gonna have to rotoscope. Rotoscoping being when you have to draw around the frame of your figure frame by frame so that they can blend into the background. We'll talk about this a little more later, but avoid it as much as possible. Secondly, you want to have consistent lighting. If you have a window, I recommend blacking it out because any discrepancies between your video takes, you're going to have a hard time hiding the differences. You can see in this video of mine a very noticeable lighting difference in the picture reflection behind me. In some shots, I was able to line up my crop with the frame, but for others, it's an ugly blatant line down the middle. And let me tell you, I didn't want that and you don't want it either. Also be mindful of how your lights are set up. I'm pretty basic when it comes to my lighting, but I've learned with clone videos, you want to be extra mindful of shadows. Check to make sure where you plan to be so your shadow does not overlap the other character's playing area. This can be hard to feather out, and again, it's just not a problem you want to deal with for a simple video effect. Third and lastly, set up your camera. You definitely want to use a tripod or steady base so that your camera is barely moved or touched in between takes. Also make sure your camera is set to manual with your exposure how you want it to be and the focus to be right where your clones are gonna stand. This is all so we have a consistent shot and background to work with. Now that those are all set, go ahead and shoot your video. Uh, I'd like to change outfits between characters as well as uh, use extra angles sometimes to hide mistakes but also to help enhance the storytelling. I like to play as if I see my other clones. This allows the viewer to believe that I'm actually in the same space as my other self, but it's also more fun to have the reactions and to look elsewhere than the instrument or the camera. Once you're done shooting, let's take our video card and load it into Final Cut. So I went ahead and set up a project file. I'm going to be using my experience of sound clip from 12 ways to play the Rimba Tubes. So first you want to drag your main video into the timeline. I remember my last take being the best version of the first clone, so I'm gonna go ahead and crop out the first half and trim the end roughly to where I stop playing. Next, I'm gonna grab the second clone video and place it on top of the main storyline. I remember my first take being my favorite, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing of trimming out the empty space at the beginning and cropping out the rest. For now, we'll roughly place it where he comes in. Now that we have both videos, I'm gonna add in my music track below the bass line and start lining up the song with my drumming. We're gonna speed this section up, but basically to sync, I like to zoom in and physically move the tracks frame by frame until I see the visual strike on my paddles in time with the audible hit of the note. We'll clean up the trimming of our ends and let's watch and listen to what the project looks like now. Awesome. So we have our first clone playing and then the second clone basically takes over the entire screen. So now what we're going to do is select the top video track, go over to our effects browser and scroll down the video effects menu to masks. Now you have two options. You can use the graduated mask and if we drop that on top of our second video, you'll see a nice basic straight line of a fade with one of your buttons being the target and the other being the center. And you can see if we swivel around, it, you can make them both disappear, but what we want to do is put them right in between the two and... And he hops right in. But I prefer to use the draw mask feature. So let's delete that one, plop this one in, and we will physically draw in the control points on the video display. I use this because we have more versatility with the mask shape. In this case, we can connect the dots to outline a basic square, and as soon as we do, we will see the completed mask and can drag out our points beyond the frame. Now you can still see a sharp line in the shadow on the wall. 
So to fix that, we go to our inspector window and use the feather tool. Go ahead and adjust it accordingly to help blend the mask line. And side note, I wanna bring back the term rotoscope. This draw mask tool is essentially how we rotoscope in Final Cut. You can literally add any number of points to get the mask exactly how you need and want it. But for our purposes, we can keep it simple. So let's undo that and check out our video as it looks now. So as you can see, we still have that little bit of overlay before the clone pops up. So I'm going to trim the beginning of that to where Snubby number one barely makes it out of the way, and then the mask can come in without cutting off his arm. But now, see how that shadow pops in from the overlay? To fix this, my trick is to go to your transitions and add a cross dissolve. We're going to drag this onto our second video. We'll shrink it down. Don't forget to delete the one at the end if your program automatically adds it. And then let's zoom in and adjust our transition length to match exactly before the clone enters the shot. So if we scrub through the video timeline, we'll see that that overlay will smoothly join the main clip. And if we play it back, still not perfect. We can keep messing around with the timing, but regardless, this is an example of how the exposure appears to be slightly darker on the right side. So let's move on to the final step click on your color inspector, choose the tab exposure. And I like to adjust the center dial for this type of matching, and that is our midtones. So let's drag that up slightly. And if we scrub through the frames, we can already see a great improvement in the blend, especially on our two backgrounds. And if we play all that back in real time, shaboom. Now, some of you might be done and that's great. But what if you have a clone later on that's playing an epic PVC pipe solo and they cross the mask line into your beautifully drawn out area? Here, look, you can kind of see it here. The paddle starts to fade away in this one spot. The answer is keyframes. So go back to our video inspector, select our draw mask, and let's find the moment right before our clone crosses the frame. Looks about right there. So leave your playhead on that spot. Click on the plus mark for your control points, and that's gonna leave a keyframe, which basically locks in exactly where each of our points were drawn for this moment in the video. We'll then push ahead to where he crosses the line. Create a new keyframe for this point, and then I like to skip ahead to where we return to normalcy, which looks about there. So now we have three key frames. Let's jump back to our middle one and adjust the mask so we can accommodate the actions of our well-intended but overreaching clone. Now, if we play that back, it looks a little something like this. This is definitely advanced micro detail work and you really only notice it if we break it down frame by frame. So if we go back to our first home position, you can see the mask line moves over just as we orchestrated it and then returns as the paddle moves away too. Trust me, this is stuff no one else will notice, but now you can and you can apply it to your own work. I'm happy enough with this, so let's watch our whole edited segment. I'm gonna beat it right there because you should go watch the full video for the ending. But before you go, I wanna give you one last tip for your final product touches. If you wanna do this, select all of your tracks in the timeline, right click and select new compound clip. Enter in a title, and now you have a standalone track on your timeline that you can still double click to access and edit, but on your main project page, you can treat this as one video file to edit your overall color correction. I like to sometimes use the color balance and then fidget with the settings on the board, or you can apply overall audio EQs, text overlays, or whatever you desire. And this is all with a clean timeline to work off of and to play back your clones exactly how you left them. And there you have it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments for me. This is the first type of tutorial video I've ever made. So if you have any feedback for me, by all means, leave that as well. I hope this video inspires you to get creative with your own cloning split screen effects. If you do end up creating your own, please tag and share them with me. And I'll see you next week with a new Rimbatubes video. Snubby J signing off. <laughs>